आई 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 नेवर केयर अबाउट लोग क्या कहेंगे बिकॉज द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट दैट यूर कॉट यू पुट योर सेल्फ इन टू इन टू अ बबल एंड यूर नेवर गुड बी बुल कम आउट ऑफ दैट आई फील विदाउट टेक्नीशियंस और अ डायरेक्टर इज लिटरली सम वन लुकिंग फॉर वाटर इन अ डिजर्ट देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल लाइन आई आई हर्ड से दैट फ्यर इज अ फनी थिंग इट मेक्स फनी पीपल डू फियरलेस थिंग्स today is a very special show and the reason it's special is we are creating a new format all together and this format is basically we're bringing a new guest and a uh, guest is somebody this time who is very very close to me and i've been trying to make this happen since pre covid times and uh, yeah and i'm so glad he's the first guest on our new format which was mudgal show and uh, he's a director screenwriter acting coach and a very dear friend and a true bangalorean okay that is most important he's a true bangalorean and he's none other than saad khan thank you thank so, you so uh, welcome to vishwas mukul show i'm so glad saad you're here and thank you so uh, much and we're doing this because post covid <laughs> we're not shaking hands anymore we just fits fits bumping that's that's a new deal absolutely thank so, you so much man just kind words and i yeah. i i i sort of resonate with everything you said right uh, but primarily that um, you know uh, i'm so happy that this this venture of yours is taking shape finally it's, right. it's out there yeah. uh, only because i feel um, whatever you have also done in terms of your achievements i think um in terms of bringing a perspective to people right. uh, for them to hear different stories right. I, i think it's a wonderful platform so yeah. i mean cheers to you thank you so much see our audience mainly are people who are looking for inspiration and people are looking at uh, career guidance and people who want like lead a balanced life still move towards uh, success at the same time yeah. right and uh, today i want you to basically give them the tips and your insights your inspirations how you became the saad khan wow, that's very uh, sweet of you right that's very sweet uh, of you. i know uh, you got a lot of success uh, you know after and i'm sure there's a lot going on you know behind the scenes and uh, especially your uh, the biggest hit i think was your uh, uh, humble you know, politician humble nagraj, politician nagraj. Yeah. i think it came on amazon prime yeah that was a uh, movie the first one we we did part 2 as well part 2 as well i think uh, with that danish said yes. and uh, as a super hit uh, movie uh, congratulations for that i think the, the streak is going on now and that's where i think by the end of the show we are going to be talking about the newest series that is coming out yeah. from saad khan that is constable girpade yes constable and girpade. fantastic name by the way Thank you. and so stay tuned for that uh, we're going to be talking about that in the very end so but do not like switch it off or go away somewhere so stay tuned yeah just be here guys like, yes. otherwise we'll like charge you for it like <laughs> we will so basically the first thing that we want to start with is that uh, see one thing i see when i whenever i talk with you is um, uh, we both writers absolutely okay? so we both create stories and uh, many of the times we are like you know uh, taking inspiration from ourselves and people around us and all that so but what i want to ask is basically is about how you look at uh, writing okay what is, is there like a process is it something that you choose in the particular subject what inspires you like you know i just want you like if you have to like put your process out there sure you have yeah. spill your secrets out there for people <laughs> how would that be I, i that's a great question see from a writing standpoint for me primarily vishwas uh, if it's a movie that i'm writing uh, i've uh, been lucky to study filmmaking so uh from a writing standpoint when you're writing a screenplay for a movie versus writing a screenplay for a web series uh, luckily for me in my career i've had an opportunity so far to direct films web series uh, i've also directed um, you know podcasts or um, audio casts so to speak so for me um, whenever i step into the writing process it's important what the context is that i'm doing so for example if i'm just take humble politician nagraj for instance we knew that there's this crazy character called nagraj so the film is going to be around nagraj because the title is nagraj or humble right. politician nagraj for that matter so when i embarked on writing the story in the screenplay and obviously the story was written with uh, with danish but the screenplay i wrote on my own uh, the screenplay follows usual act 1 act 2 act 3 structure but when i step into um, you know writing 
I first write a complete plot outline. Um, a, a plot outline, say, imagine for, in 20 points, what would my story be in 20 points? Right. 20 bullet points. I put that down. And then I start fleshing it out. Right. Um, the, every writer has a different process. Right. My process is I like to first have an overview and then I get into the details. Right. Um, and then obviously in, in, in writing, screenwriting, when there is a movie, there are multiple characters. There's primary, secondary, tertiary, mm -hmm. but the primary and secondary are important. Or in, in for, for Nagarad specifically, there is one character. Mm -hmm. What is his arc through the movie? Mm -hmm. What is happening to him in act one, act two, act three? Act three. What is the, um, you know, the biggest a problem that Nagaraj has, an obstacle, and how by the end of the film uh, he as a character is going to uh, deal with this obstacle. Mm. Um, I don't want to get too technical, but um, from a writing standpoint, if you are a writer and if you're aspiring to write a movie, uh, it's definitely good because now with social media and YouTube and stuff, you have so many different videos out there to at least learn the basics. For me, I always believe that art is science, mm. and if you approach art scientifically, then there is a breakdown to it. Right. And you break it down very methodically, uh, very eloquently and smartly so mm -hmm. that when you are writing it and then you from writing when it goes into visual, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the, the happiness that you get as a writer mm -hmm. to see what you've written and then convert it into um, you know, a, a film, a movie theater screen or on your web series in whatever platform, it gives you that feeling of, okay, I had penned this down and now it's taken this shape. Right. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is pretty much a larger, uh, shorter answer, but the larger answer would be to get into more details, which I'm sure we can. Correct. You know, one of the biggest things when people ask me questions, usually on social, is like this syndrome. Yeah. Log kya kahenge syndrome. Oh yeah, of course. So basically, how do you approach that? You know, when you're writing a story, are you looking at ki whether the audience is going to like my story, my movie? Or are you, my, I personally, what I do is like, I write for myself. That yes. is, that's how I do. How, how, what is your process? Um, I, I, I never care about Lokya Kaenge because the moment you start thinking about that, you caught your, you put yourself into a, into a bubble Absolutely. and you're never going to be able to come out of that. Right. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer. Uh, so I studied, I okay. did my mechanical engineering and during my mechanical engineering, I used to direct stage plays. I was a okay. playwright. I started really early. So I directed my first play when I was 16. And I remember every step of the way, my parents, every relative was like, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? This is not going to do anything. And you know, he's going to end up wearing fab India kurtas and <laughs> just be poor. That was the mindset I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, you've got engineering, do an engineering degree. The, the most com common sense is to do an MBA after that, you know, but I never listened. I'm the, I'm the, at least personally, I'm the kind of person if you make me stand on the road and be like, don't cross the road. I'm the kind of guy who will cross the road <laughs> and I will actually run. Right? right? Yeah. Uh, and I had that mentality from the from the very beginning. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like a lot of other people that I've spoken to in my industry have pushed the envelope. Right. Have not just sat and been comfortable. Right. Have pushed themselves to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And in that journey, they've discovered themselves, mm -hmm. discovered art discovered that by being uncomfortable, they've created stuff, right. which I'm sure you also agree with. Right. So for me, that adage really doesn't work. Ki log kya In fact, I would be like, logo ko kehne de. <laughs> Jitna aur kahenge, utna aapko aur motivation mile. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, you have created a niche for yourself, especially with comedy, right? So how do you create comedy? This is like the most difficult thing anybody can do, in my opinion. Okay. How do you create comedy? Wow, that's a loaded question, <laughs> like nachos. <laughs> but um, uh, for me, I think uh, there's a beautiful line I, I heard said, it said that fear is a funny thing. Uh, it makes funny people do fearless things. Hmm. Um, and I that stuck with me that, okay. um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, we all have as artists, we have this vulnerability, right? We are, we are paranoid about stuff. And that leads to fear sometimes. So uh, even when I was earlier writing uh, different genres and when I even stepped into comedy, I, I realized that if I have to say something fearlessly, I have to look at it from a, from a funny perspective. Yeah. So if it's political satire, how do I insult someone without insulting them, <laughs> for example? Or how do I make a sarcastic remark where the other person is like, oh my God, you know, he wasn't sarcastic, but everyone around knows that it's sarcasm. Right. You know, there are times where uh, if you've been in the airport, and you go up and you say, is that seat taken? Mm. And it's actually free. And if I'm sitting on that seat and you come and ask me the seat, and if I'm like, no, my, my grandmother's sitting here. 
in a very serious tone and you just walk off <laughs> that means you haven't got the sarcasm <laughs> because there's nobody sitting there right and i used to do that a lot okay like every time when someone asked me a question like for example i'll be like so tell me more about your mother and they be like my mother i'm like no your grandmother's mother <laughs> or i'm just telling your neighbor's mother and they'll be like my neighbor's mother and they would not get it <laughs> and i was like wow this is crazy so then i built up on sarcasm quite a bit right. so a lot of what i do uh, even uh, naturally when an actor does a take uh-huh. and they're like how was it and i'm like it was amazing let's do one more okay <laughs> and then but if it's amazing why are we doing one more okay. and i'll be like it's just the style uh, but, uh, but to create comedy just to answer that in a nutshell would be there is no real set plan vishwas mm. um uh, but uh, tips would be definitely observe a lot mm. uh, read a lot right uh, and not just comedy read about things that are even boring and banal right because from there you might figure out some comedic um you know spark that might come out right uh, a lot of times also there is a naturally inherent sense of humor that people have mm. um somewhere i think i also had had that from from my childhood days right. and that i think it's just been polished and sharpened I also feel the company that you keep, the kind of people that you hang around with. Yeah, that really helps. Absolutely. Uh, I have some, um, I have some people in my family. Uh, growing up, uh, my uncle, especially my dad's uh, younger brother, he had this, uh, he had this nature of making people feel comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what a gift, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I and I picked picked up on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, of course, watching a lot of uh, Jim Carrey growing up. Right. Um, I feel a lot of what we do is inspiration right. right like Tarantino says that you know it's very difficult even if you're copying something you right. have to do a very good job at copying it right if you are doing a good job at copying it that also can become an original right um, um so I, I i would say um, the last point i would definitely take what to make about comedy is that as you mentioned it's serious business and it's tough to do right i actually don't look at it like that mm. i enjoy it yeah i think that is a That's secret really sauce right yeah. you have to enjoy it exactly so if you're making a character if right. i'm making two characters speak with each other if it's right. a boy and a girl right. and they're just flirting right and if the girl guy goes up and says to the girl what's up mm. but if he says what's up baby doll <laughs> then that changes the tone right right and how will the girl and she's like i'm not barbie she mm. can respond like that right and she's like no i know i know you're not barbie but mm. but you know i'm pink inside <laughs> by seeing you so right. many things come out so i like unpredictability in comedy like right. how this improv just happened right for me it's always been about spontaneity it's always been about unpredictability and i always mm. like to to make the audience go oh okay what just happened which right. i mean a lot of people are doing today right whether it's any genre not just comedy right this podcast is powered by good work labs good work labs is the world leading tech outsourcing provider so for all your tech and outsourcing requirements log on to goodworklabs.com so in the previous segment we spoke about uh, the process of writing but one thing uh, saad i noticed is when you came inside to the you were i mean yeah let's <laughs> yeah just, just let's be very clear no okay. no no pun intended yes. right Okay, so when you came inside uh, our facility, yes, thank you, thank you for saying that. When right. I came inside the Good Work facility, yes, yes, uh, Good Work Co Work. Yeah, Good Work Co Work. Uh, what do you feel about Good Work Co Work, the facility we have? Oh wow, that's a that's a direct plug. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to charge you for it later, but uh, it's great. Yeah, the energy is fabulous, and I think it's spacious, right. and it's in the heart of the city. It's in Whitefield, right. uh, which is in Bangalore, of yeah. course. And uh, yeah, I love it. I think I, I, I'm primarily here because I've, we've been talking for so long, and I really love uh, the fact that you're you're writing and you're doing so many other things. Uh, from an entrepreneurial uh, standpoint, I think it's so hard. Right. And uh, you know, withstanding COVID and so many other things, and I know you also kept expanding, which right. I which which I keep keep reading on social, and I was right. like, wow, man, this guy's like really like you know he's flashing all all over. It's pretty awesome. Thank so you so much. Cool. Thank you so much. See, one of the things is uh, I feel that people we need to be good with people, right? That is the main thing. One thing I noticed is when you came in, you just made everybody so uh, at ease. And another thing is you practically guessed everybody's state, where they are from. <laughs> How did you do that? Um, that's I, I think it's a, a lot of live improv shows uh, because I've been doing live improv for almost uh, nine, ten years now. uh and i think um for me it's always uh, i i've in my shows i've i've obviously had the foot in the mouth situation where i've gone and said the wrong thing but i've also kind of guessed right uh and i also catch on dialects so uh, recently i went to a dentist and uh, i was lying on the chair on the chair 
<laughs> the dentist is chair and um, the associate, the assistant dent dentist, not the main dentist. She was first observing my mouth. Wow, this sounds so wrong, but <laughs> she said, uh, open your mouth. <laughs> and okay. I was like, you're a Malayali. She's like, how did you know? <laughs> so you said, open. Okay. So I guess, yeah, I, I catch on dialects. So, oh, okay. uh, but I feel uh, I also, uh, I, I, I could go severely wrong. I could insult someone as well. And there have been times like that. So I, I try to just keep it uh, funny and light. Uh, uh, but I, I've just been lucky, I guess, Vishwas. I've just been lucky that right. it's, it's more about just... Yeah. I feel if you don't have people um, who uh, you know vouch for you, who um, you know um, you know make sure that they also are, are supporting what you're doing, it's very difficult in right. our industry because our industry is a people industry. Right. It is about collaboration right. and putting a lot of people come together. So just to make a movie, if you go through the through the end credits, there will be so many names. Right. Like you know, if it's a very big budget film, there'll be about five thousand people. Yeah. Right. And I remember in Humble when the end credits happened, I. I only in the end of the film I realized that there were about 350 people who worked on the film. Wow. Right, so it it's it, it takes a lot of people. So right. I think it, it's important for anyone who's an artist mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise to to try and make an effort. Uh, right. But once you make an effort, that I think at that at the first step itself is a great. Uh, I, I would say it's a great motivator for anything that has to follow. Right. So that brings me to the next question. So. Um, uh, Sorry to interrupt, should we yeah, call Neil yeah. right now? Yeah, we can call him Neil, I think let's do that. Let's call Neil, yeah. it's yeah. 6.40, I don't want him to disappear. Yeah, 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 let's, let's do it. Because we'll get into a flow. Yeah, absolutely. Neil, yeah. hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. This is Vishwas, I, I sent you his profile. Hi, Neil, how are you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, how are you, Vishwas? I'm doing great, so glad to have you on our show. What must you look like, Nikhil? The must look right. Sorry guys, I'm traveling and I'm in so lapu bike. No, but I like it. Uh, so no, I've really always good. seen Neil with like amazing really? <laughs> because of the show, no? He's Looking like, very uh, authentic and you know, like you know, just got up look. <laughs> I'm just here for Saad. I can do anything for Saad. I oh I'm so glad to hear that. We just have a few quick questions. We just want trying to bring out uh, you know different aspects of his life. And because you know you yeah. have worked with him um, so much. I would like to ask just a few questions, huh? so yeah, yeah. any one uh, one or two like you know funny or interesting incidents that actually bring out the personality of Saad that nobody else knows. Something he's going, that only he's you going know. to say something crazy, he's already smiling, I can see that naughtiness. Bolo bhai, aap please Hindi mein, Marathi mein, jaise bhi maar na hai, maro aap. Saad is a very, uh, you already Everyone knows he is sad. He is an improv guy. Basic. Right. His face is improv. So, one time on set, he was an actor who was a line of people. And he was obviously directing and was, he, had a, he had a PA mic on his hand. Uh, he was sitting on the monitor. And the actor who was in the line, when he took the line, he took the line a little time. लेना <laughs> 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 And there was a big pause on set, and I didn't understand. So on take, your husband salutes you. Because I know this cut is going to happen. This is what Sadiq like. He can, uh, he can be a <laughs> sometimes a nightmare for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a dreamy nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, no, but Neil is. Uh, at the show that we have done together, Constable Girpade, right. uh, Neil has been such an asset. And I don't mean like ass hyphen ET, <laughs> like a proper asset. Right. Like he's just been an asset. Yeah. Like, you know, every time he's there in the frame, I know that Samal Lega because he right. also his improv, what he's doing. Like, you know, there are times where he, even if he doesn't have dialogues, right. he's so into it. He's right. there, like he's right there. He's right. performing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Like, yeah, I yeah. Uh, see some of the reels that your reels are so like really funny, Neil. I really uh, took a look at a lot of them and just laughed my ass up basically. So uh, yeah, so um, how is your experience basically working with uh, Saad? Uh, 
I mean, like no uh, filters. This is nightmare. Nahi bolo nahi. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's actually a different process. Like Saad uh, is one of those directors who uh, is was very much new to me. The over of this process, the way he works. Uh, first of all, he gives you a lot of freedom to mm-hmm. explore, and then uh, he also has his uh, things which he will do. You will do it. But you will not know. Also, he is very fast. Like, if you are high or not, like we are on time or not on time, he is always fast. So uh, you have to match his pace. The pace of uh, the pace of 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 the but once you get into his train then there's no looking back and you can have fun like anything uh, but that's the that's now uh, because saath is a very i think he thinks a lot why talking also he thinks a lot like mm-hmm. itna fast sochta hai utna fast bolta bhi hai yaar so <laughs> while directing he gets ask you for suggestions and gives suggestions at the same time kya acha hota raha lekin ye mast hota raha So uh, this is a final question for you. Yeah. If you had to ask one question to Sad, ठीक है? What would that be? Your question. <laughs> your question is to so Sad. Evil. <laughs> and he will speak only the truth. Oh God. Okay. It's and nothing else. else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. You can choose one and answer. Okay. Thank you. So <laughs> sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> दोनों क्वेश्चन पहले सुन लो हाँ डन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वेन वॉज द लास्ट टाइम यू है फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वेन वॉज द लास्ट टाइम यू है नेटवर्क डजेंट गो नाउ नो नेटवर्क आई एम आंसर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन कैन कैन मी इन टू लॉर ऑफ ट्रेवल सो Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and when when am i getting married see um, i want to get married neil you know that i really want to get married but there's no i don't have any options so uh, let me ask answer your question with a question can you help me get married <laughs> according to me you should not only get married because i am married and i know no not uh, oh, yeah, i shouldn't get married i shouldn't get married you say <laughs> yeah yeah what, what about you what, what is your thought If you find the right person, definitely. I find the right person. So you know, yeah. I'm going to just take uh, Vishwas's answer and I'm going to steal it shamelessly. Right. When the right person is around, yeah, I'm going to get married. But you really? cannot ask me then when is the last time you had <laughs> after, after you've gotten married. After, after, <laughs> <laughs> after getting married, you can't be like, "Achha, my brother, a question is, who answered? No, he didn't. Now, just finish it. Please." Now, just finish it. <laughs> But no, thank you so much for. Uh, I know you have taken time out. Uh, thank, really, you really so much, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for being on Vishwas Mudgal show. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. And you're rocking as always. Best of luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Best of luck. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So that was Neil Sarekar from the Just Neil fame, right? Yes. Uh, Content creator, actor, actor. Um, supreme human being. Yes. Fabulous human. Being. And uh, Saad's close friend. Yes. and uh, yeah we are so glad that he could come and you know bring a new aspect to saad's uh, personality ask me controversial questions <laughs> which i couldn't answer as you heard yeah. but the second question i'll answer at some point so right. you can just dm me directly <laughs> you know i'm joking don't dm me about that question <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, yeah so after that i think uh, just to get behind the scenes okay uh, With all the actors performing in front of the camera, we always forget the unsung heroes. Yes, of people who make it happen. Right. So, um, so if you can just shed some light on what happens behind the scenes. Okay. So, what is the whole process like? You know, that will really uh, then bring us to the next question of what is like a what are some of the career options in the industry itself? Basically. Oh, yeah, there are there are many actually, and I think you're right. The unsung heroes is such a beautiful word, uh, just, or, you know, two words for whatever you just said. Uh, I, I've been very lucky that I've worked with some beautiful technicians. Uh, when I say technicians, they are called technicians in my industry, but they are DOP, which is director of photography, also called a cinematographer, editor. Uh, then you have music director, you have uh, production designer, also called as art director. then you have a first assistant director also called as first ad the direction team that comprises of the first ad and his team or her team uh, for that matter uh, then you've got your if you there is songs then there is a lyricist then there are writers who are behind the scenes 
in the pre-production process you have uh, a lot of the direction team people i i pay a lot of attention to writing vishwas so i have a writers team right. so my writing team uh, in fact for constable girpade that uh, is uh, you know out on october 6th and if this interview drops after after october 6th um you can watch it on uh, amazon mini tv amazon prime i hope i can plug please i yeah, just, I just did uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah i just did and there again uh, my writers uh, uh, other than me there is abhinav vaidya and aditya bharadwaj again writers who have uh, worked with me for almost 6 7 months mm-hmm. uh, around 8 months to put the entire story together write all the 10 episodes right. from a story and screenplay standpoint um there are editors mm-hmm. you know without whom you cannot put the show out there is a vision that's captured of the director by the cinematographer but then in the post production process you have an editor who has to edit it to beat and when i say to beat um uh, editing a comedy show for example or a comedy movie is different from editing a thriller is different from editing a horror because each uh, genre has a different beat has a different style of it right mm-hmm. like if there is a jump scare moment in horror it has to be edited differently mm-hmm. if it's a punchline where i am say uh, insulting someone and on the other side i need to get an expression mm-hmm. that timing of that edit is very mm-hmm. important so bharat mc uh, who's been my long time editing partner and friend very dear friend he's edited humble politician nagraj he's edited constable girpade mm-hmm. as well uh, and we have a great understanding and tuning and i feel without technicians uh, a director is literally someone looking for water in a desert mm-hmm. i know you know because a lot of what all of them uh, provide fills that bottle of bottle with water Right. that each drop is i would say a lot of the sweat of a technician from the back end right uh, and i always make sure that uh, the, the it's just not the cast but it's also the cast and crew right and uh, everyone or oh, everyone comes together to make the actors look good on camera as you know right. look good you know sound good so the sound team uh, people who edit sing sound even for humble even for girpade right. for the web series of humble edit sing sound which means everything was captured on set live sound was captured yeah. so the sound design plays an important role right. you know how do you get different sounds to come the dialogues have to be treated with ambience like how we're talking right now right. if we were say in a metro mm-hmm. there would be metro ambience yes that has to be then treated on the dialogues right. and then there is foley foley is sounds that you make without electronic means right. a clap is a foley right. the the sounds that my shirt is making when i'm moving is foley right. you know or um sound effects mm-hmm. say i crack a joke i need a sound effect which mm-hmm. is maybe cricket sound mm-hmm. right so that sound effect so all this comes together right. by the sound designer he takes the bgm he or she takes the background music to merge all of this so Mm-hmm. It's a lot of things that come together. We just go watch a show and a movie, and in thirty seconds we're like, "Yar, bakwas hai," right. or amazing. But the amount of work that goes in the back end—it's right. insane. Right. So if somebody wants to seriously consider, especially after the OTT boom, right? If somebody wants to uh, consider this as a career, yeah. How would one start? I mean, how would even one uh, get started on this whole? Um, I, I'm, I'm absolutely. Um, crazy ambition mixed with uh, determined passion right. and relentlessness hmm. i mean because uh, once you once you do well in the industry then you have many options right and it and as you all know that you know there is a certain fame aspect as well right. but having said that i think it's a, it's a lot of determination a lot of you have to be completely completely smitten right by your work Right. uh you know and it, i'm sure like you are you are a writer as well and you right. do, you're in, you're a techie as well right. but there's a certain passion that you that you function with that's why you're able to do so many things right. uh, i i think that is synonymous for all industries which was right right yeah. that it's, it's absolutely in that that fire in the belly that people talk about right like i feel like with every project that fire for me keeps on increasing right it almost comes up to my not just from the belly it comes up here goes down below no pun intended again but <laughs> i think that if if that is not there right. then um, there is no start once you have that then you you uh, you apprentice yourself Right. you learn you know there is a lot of ways either you go to film school if you don't have that kind of money then you go and assist director you know right. directors who you want to work with who you want to learn from mm-hmm. spend time with them if you want to be an editor go and assist an editor if you want to be a cinematographer go and learn about photography and lighting uh, a lot of it is learning so yeah, these things can be uh, in the media school is something that people learn yeah. all this absolutely right. um there is film school there is ftii there is you know um, a lot of um, different film schools in the world um that, that's one place or you could really learn on at work which is learning with filmmakers you know mm-hmm. 
that's also great. I, I I was assisting Mr. Ashutosh Gowarikar for a year, who made Lagan. Mm-hmm. I worked with him. Yes, of okay. course, I worked with him for a year in Bombay, okay. and uh, it was a beautiful experience because. I uh, was uh, working with an Oscar nominated filmmaker right, when right, I was right, working right. with him and I worked with him after Lagan right. uh, and it was it was it was really nice because I also did film school but I also got that experience mm-hmm. and what I did in film school and what I did with Mr. Kwarikar very different right. both different learnings right and in fact even today I am I'm still learning with every project I'm learning right because with every project I'm dealing with different actors I'm dealing with different technicians absolutely so it's just it's a constant learning yeah, process right. yeah and it's persistent learning right And you keep challenging yourself, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's the, the only way. Yeah, that if you don't challenge yourself, then what's the fun? I right. mean, uh, if I need to make a comedy show or a comedy movie, if at the end of it you're not laughing, then of course I've not done my job well. At the end of it all, I feel it's a job. Right. Like uh, being an artist is a job. Right. Like being a software developer is a job. Programmer is a job. Architect is a job. Right. This also is a job, and you are doing it for a certain return, and that return. For us, is the audience's appreciation and approval, right? See, one thing people keep asking uh, me is like, uh, as a career coach, right? So, everything people ask is like, okay, how much can I make? Okay, right. <laughs> Very important. So, if I'm a software engineer, yeah, how much can I make? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I'm a business uh, business uh, manager yeah. uh, or a sales manager, whatever, yeah. how much can I make? So, every everybody is asking me. So basically, now if somebody looks at a career like yeah. a technician or a cameraman yeah. or I don't know a, a number of things yeah. that we, you guys have, what can they expect? How much money they can make? Oh, well, they can make a lot of money. Okay. Of course, I mean, look at the films now. People said during COVID that oh, uh, theater movies are not going to work. The theatrical movies are making thousand crores, five hundred crores, and not just in Hindi, right. in other languages also. Right. Uh, and um, your value only increases with. More money at the box office. Right. Also, with the OTT advent of OTT, there are so many uh, different technical uh, jobs in the industry that have come to the fore right. that are well-paying jobs. Right. Um, I know cinematographers who do three, four projects a year, mm-hmm. and they make enough money for a year that is good for maybe four, three, four years for another career. Right. They can make in one year. Okay. How much? Like, I'm just want to give um, an idea to the uh, audience. Okay, I, depends. I mean, see, I can, I, I'll give you a ballpark. Yeah. I mean, if I, I have to do a monthly salary, right? Right. If you are an OTT director, for example, and if you can demand for a particular project, uh, if you're a good, if you're a first-time OTT director, but you've got a web series that's coming out, right. say, I'll give you a very basic platform. Say, it's a. I will not name a platform. Say, one of the platforms one that you watch, right? And but you, if it's a debutant director, maybe you might not. Garner that much money in the beginning, but you'll still be paid a decent sum, which can be anywhere between, uh, I would say, a minimum. I'm just throwing a range out, ten to fifteen lakhs, right? Right, and that you will probably spend about eight nine months on that project. Right. But the moment you finish one and then you go on to the next, obviously, in this industry, it's project to project. Right. Like if you're doing a corporate job, it's you're going to get your perks, you're going to get your, um, you know, your promotion based on how you performed. Sometimes one year, sometimes two years, or three years, based on the HR policy. For us, it's about a project. Right. If your first project, imagine your first project, you hit it out of the park. Right. You just do fabulously. Your second project, it's up to you what you want to charge because by then you'll have people be like, okay, we really want you to, you, we really want you. So you tell us the price. Right. And that's how it works. Right. That's really informative. I think for a lot of you out there. thinking that okay this is off bit and then maybe i'm going to make it or not i think that kind of fear one should not have that's with any other industry i feel right but yes of course i agree with you i, I because, resonate with that because yeah. this is a slightly off bit you know people, I, yes of course it's not a first career choice it's not like uh, right. you know a baby is like a disco director banana exactly is quite just banana it doesn't work like that yeah it, it doesn't come in the engineer and uh, engineer uh, doctor, doctor. Uh, it uh, <laughs> mba space yeah. so yeah, yeah it's definitely but it uh, yeah, absolutely i think um, right. it's definitely a little bit of a gamble right. uh, i would not deny that but i think you also have to have that kind of uh, perseverance and the passion for it absolutely and uh, i always tell this to all aspiring people in the industry whoever wants to be either a director or an editor or a writer is that you first make sure that you have competency for it which means you gather the knowledge for it that that knowledge can either come from reading or watching or working with someone but once you have that kind of knowledge you keep building on it and at some point you will get your break it's just it's just a matter of time absolutely so you guys uh, don't go in anywhere because now by the end of it we're going to have a big news and it's going to be the constable kirpade the new series that is coming out yes. from sad so stay tuned 
guest please from the ashes of the world a hero must rise this is the concept of the best selling novel that i have written the last avatar age of kalki trilogy the first book so i would recommend pick it up from amazon or flipkart and get your copy right now so welcome back just now <laughs> in the break sad practically guest okay one of our okay vaishak is right here and he guessed what he ate basically just by but you did yeah smelling the burp <laughs> i mean i didn't smell the burp it just the burp sort of just, just smell came towards me yeah. and i was like oh this is this is this is okay. it wasn't pungent though it was it was, right. it was a very biryani kind of feel okay so, yeah. just you if you guys are wondering what happens between all the podcast shots this exactly goes yeah, on. I, I, i smell <laughs> Yeah, that's like oh god, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm making myself sound so like one of those guys that was just like very creepy. But the guys, it's, it's a joke. Right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So uh, coming back to the next question. So one thing, right? Uh, you have done multiple languages, I think, right? The movies and series in multiple languages, like Kannada, Hindi, English, and next, next is the I'm Telugu. Doing so, the te- I'm doing a Telugu film. Yeah, yes. love to know more about it, and you know how you actually do this stuff. Actually, how does it even you know, work? Like localization, personalization, all of that stuff. Learning, Vishwas. I think I, I've been learning Telugu. I'm. Uh, I would say I'm. I, I can have basic conversation. Uh, basic starter conversation. I'm learning Telugu. It's a, it's a romantic comedy that I'm doing. Right after, I mean, I've just finished Constable Girpare. I'm embarking on that. Uh, it, the work, the workings of it is pretty straightforward. I just, I love learning as a person. I'm, I'm constantly craving to learn, and that same craving sort of gets into uh, me wanting to also challenge myself with different genres. Uh, Constable Girpare is an out and out comedy. Now Sangeet is a romantic comedy, um, and um, it's um, it's my first Telugu film. It's being produced by Lehri Lehri Music, and uh, uh, and Sunil uh, um, is is another producer of the film. And it's a it's a it's a very it's a light hearted, entertaining subject, uh, and I'm embarking on it um, in December, Jan this year, uh, December and Jan of next year. And I I think uh, with every project, I feel for me it's again again I might sound like a broken record, but it's all about learning. Uh, and i feel like if i have not learned something from a particular project then it's been futile uh and um uh, i think what the audience can look forward to is i i feel like it's always been for me entertainment engagement and information these are the three things whenever i do a project either it has to be informative it has to be engaging and it has to be entertaining these three things have to tick mark for me right <laughs> sorry i'm just not able to forget how you could <laughs> Huh? Guess the biryani. Yes, <laughs> are you still there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he, I also think his body language when he when he kind of he was almost eating the burp, but he couldn't. That I think made oh me realize god. that. Which heavy khaya is, bande. Oh my god! I think impro. Yeah, I hope you haven't. Don't feel bad. Yeah. All right. Okay. That. Okay. That's. I'm so glad you didn't have mushrooms. <laughs> Then it would have been a very different. <laughs> Why are we? And let's move past this older okay. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Vaisha, we should ban you eating. Okay, before podcast from now on. Definitely. <laughs> okay. So, okay, that's another interesting thing, though. When you're doing these things, what is the target audience? What is the age group? The Gen Alpha, Gen, uh, you know, Gen Z, Gen Millennials. Z. What are you thinking, basically? What is the target? Um, um, that's a actually, it's a very good question. Considering the OTT uh, zone right now with web series is definitely um, in the back end. There's a lot of thought that goes into who is the target audience. um with uh, with mini tv with constable kid pade this is the first original for mini tv now till now they've had licensed shows but oh. constable kid pade is their first original you've been doing many first huh you did the first kannada in uh, amazon prime yes now this one for them for uh, yeah. you know the original yeah we've also been the first regional um, show to be nominated for film fair as well with amul oh, okay. that happened um, last year so that right. also i've i've just vishwas i and be very i'm not trying to be fake humble here but it's The honest answer is that I've just been lucky, man. Right. I've just been lucky, and I just think that I've had wonderful people that have rallied around. Right. And with Constable Girpade, also um, coming back to the uh, to question about how the target audience, mm-hmm. definitely uh, we are targeting millennials right. uh, as well as Gen Zs right. because it's comedy, and I feel in uh, either it's uh, you, if you make a violent film, mm-hmm. violence is something that audience loves to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into details, but I also feel people love to watch a comedy film. Like they go into theaters, and I recently um, we, because we have two Malayalis behind the cameras, I watched Romancham, a uh, Malayali horror film, which is so funny. It's just about a bunch of seven jobless guys, and they 
they they're pretty much in a in a small house mm-hmm. uh, in a small apartment rather and it's so funny it's hilarious mm-hmm. right so um, the target audience also for uh, for example for nagraj there were older people who have watched nagraj and messaged me or mm-hmm. called me mm-hmm. when i say older people i remember there was a 70 year old gentleman mm-hmm. who i knew from uh, earlier before i went to the us he found my number and he called me after watching nagraj in the theater and he called me from the theater oh and he said that uh, these young people are enjoying the film but there is a very important message you have given in the film about voting which i don't know if these young people are catch are going to catch it but i caught it mm. it is very nice and now it, it filled me with so much joy that there is someone who is not even my target audience who has liked it right. so you never really know right. you really never really know these things yeah There so are yeah. Somebody from Bangalore called. Yes, yes. This was when the, the movie was uh, in the theaters, mm-hmm. and because I, I mean, if you remember the movie, it ends with um, the other good person saying, you know, no sp- spoiler alert if you haven't watched Nagraj, is that um, um, when Nagraj wins, and he says that um, the other person who was supposed to win turns around and tells his wife, that, but people voted for him. Mm-hmm. So right. you might turn around and say Nagraj is a bad thing, right. but people voted for it. Right. So and we left it at that. Like and we went back to the comedy, but right. we had that moment of information, that moment of insight, right, right. that moment of um, learning. I so think I, that's very important. Yeah, so the constable Girpe or Girpade also. It's about a constable, mm. and it's about his. Uh, he he's called Girpade, but his name is Gorpade. Mm. But he's always mumbling. He's falling. You know, he's clumsy. Mm. But he wants to solve cases. He wants to do good. Right. But he's stuck with rich people problems because his police station is in a rich neighborhood. Right. So all the problems that he's getting are weird. Like there's a guy who comes and says, "I've I've lost my sperm. Right. My frozen sperm. Okay. And they have to find it. Okay. <laughs> Stuff like that. And but in every episode, there is a there is a call to action where he's like talking about things that are very relevant to the society. Right. And so it's like a. I, I've we tried to make it feel good. Um. And I think you know. Um, it's uh, I we we made a good show. We, we know that we made a good show. At least we believe that. So let's you know hope. Awesome. So you know uh, I would urge everybody to definitely watch Inspector uh, Constable Girpade. Hopefully Inspector will come. <laughs> Constable, <laughs> Constable Girpade. Girpade. And now hopefully it'll become. And आप उठ पड़े. देखने के बाद आप लोग उठ पड़े वैसे देखना. हाँ. Okay. So we're going to bring it on the screen. I think uh, people can watch. कांस्टेबल गिर पड़े हम पहुंच गए क्या चोरी हो गया अब गॉगल ब्लूटूथ स्पीकर माइस कदम रखते ही जब जमीन हिल पड़े उसे कहते देखो देखो आया कांस्टेबल गिर पड़े अमेजॉन शॉपिंग ऐप पे जाओ क्लिक करो अमेजॉन मिनी टीवी का बटन और देखो हमारा नया शो कांस्टेबल गिर पड़े बिल्कुल फ्री सो इफ यू कैन जस्ट टॉक अबाउट लाइक यू नो लाइक एलिवेटेड पिच Okay, for uh, the show, okay, for everybody, right? Why they should watch it? And uh, constable get paid. Okay. Yes. So what it bring would be? Uh, there's so much crime out there. There's so much serial killer stuff out there. I'm sure you enjoy doing all of that. But if you also just want to just relax with your family, with people, where you don't have to turn and be weird that oh my god, this action scene is too brutal or this <laughs> scene is too too much. Of Etc. Etc. Then Constable Girpade is a show for you, completely family friendly. Uh, you ha- can watch it any time. You can watch the first episode. You can watch the fourth episode. Every episode is a new case. You've got wonderful people in the cast. Each of them bring ter- terrific acting value as well as comedic value. And watch it for me, uh, Bangaloreans. Please watch it for me. It's Hindi. Uh, you might not find Kannada in it. But you find Hindi and you find heart and soul of uh, someone who loves Bangalore to bits. So please watch. So Bangalorean director, so you guys have to watch it. Yes, uh, that's one thing uh, we we got to do, yeah. and we are going to do that. Okay, thank you so much. Definitely. Okay, so with this, we will um, do the rapid fire round. Are you ready for it? Rapid fire. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, you have to speak really fast, or just. Like I already speak fast. <laughs> you I mean, more fast than this. You don't have to speak fast. You just <laughs> have to respond to. I can't think at all. Uh no you just have to think. So is everybody ready for the rapid fire? You guys are ready for my rapid fire. That's yes. the question. Okay. Super. You guys are ready. Super. All right. Okay, the first one. Okay. What comes to mind when you hear the name Neil? No wait. No 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil. Uh <laughs> I, for some reason I was thinking Momo. I don't know why. That's because we were doing a, the the scene where they had to eat momos. Okay. And Neil was like kya khila rahe ho bhai? Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh wow 
just wow that's the only word i can come wow. neil is just wow he's just absolutely wow awesome okay yeah okay the next one is uh, danish set uh talented and talented yeah okay awesome all right next is um, who's your favorite kannada actor my favorite oh um, i have to answer this fast uh, <laughs> uh favorite kannada actor i i i'm i'm going to say rakshit shetty rakshit shetty yeah because he also is a genuinely wonderful human being right. he's also one of the producers on humble called dishan nagraj right he's just a wonderful human being like he's just really wonderful yeah like every time i've interacted with him he's just he's really really i mean i don't know i'm saying it too many times but it's right. absolutely beautiful beautiful person inside and outside right and yeah. he's the guy who like really supported you and uh supported me and also yeah. very he's doing some very good work right some really good yeah, work and a lot of heart and soul in what he does right. he's very also very humble and down to earth i really really um, get attracted uh, or rather get drawn to people uh, who are just very uh, simple right. like i like simplicity right you know i, I mean I, i think get drawn to that and i think rakshit possesses that sim- simple quality you know that's one of the thing i always um, I told you just before we came that uh, one of the things that every time I call you, every time we speak, you are like so down to earth. That's one of the things I really like about you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I think we should never lose that quality. Uh, I think uh, uh, that's very sweet of you. You know, I feel right. uh, I, this is my urge to everyone as well. Right. We have one life. We can just be right. kind, and I think once you're kind, everything else sort of falls in place. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, that brings us to the next question. Yes, okay. Rapid fire. Yes. Let's Biggest begin. misconception you had about the industry before you became a part of it. Um arrogance. Mm-hmm. I had this misconception that everyone's going to be arrogant. Mm-hmm. No, it's not like that. Right. I mean, it, it, it it's there if you are. Right. If you if you're not then it's not. Right. It's a very uh, peaceful place to be and now because of so much of digital stuff, right. There is so much of merger between stars and mm-hmm. stars are doing OTT films. Mm-hmm. superstars are doing OTT films Absolutely. and vice versa so right it's not that i think there's i think there's a lot of happiness now uh, people are happy for other people that um, that's you can clearly see with the kind of films that are making 1000 crores and 800 crores it's not there is uh, there is animosity even if it's there i I'm, i like to see positivity so i'll right. go with that okay awesome the next one okay what's the one thing you would give up if you could direct a yash movie a yes to a yes movie yes a uh, yes movie okay um, yeah. what was the one thing that i would give up yeah um if i have to direct a yes movie i would this oh my god this is a tough question i would give up <laughs> can i say biryani <laughs> would that no i can't say that's biryani. your favorite <laughs> then, i'm just stuck to that i don't know uh when i say, when, you, when you, you mean a vice i need to give up or i need to give up another project what is it yeah something like that or something like a arm or a leg oh like i like that oh in that context <laughs> um i would definitely be okay to um because i have to say some body part is okay. <laughs> no anything <laughs> yeah, anything no i think i'll stick with the biryani answer <laughs> yeah i'll give up biryani if i have to so then it will help me also i lose weight yeah it will help yeah. Yeah. because i'm also like i I'm, I'm, i'm a big foodie so mm-hmm. it will help so you think you like is the the action stuff as well if like somebody like uh, i want i am going to do an action film in my career for sure yeah? i'm yeah. definitely going to do an action film in my career i'm just waiting for the right time Right. I want to I so I have done a comedy I've done a drama I've done a film noir right. I don't know if you know I've done a Hollywood drama which is uh, which is on Amazon that's uh, on postpartum depression so I've done I've done four different genres already I've romantic comedy is another new genre that I'm doing after this after romantic comedy I definitely want to do an action film mm-hmm. um, I I just want to explore genres to challenge myself yeah I think so that, that's that, definitely going to happen yeah. that's amazing yeah. actually okay the next one complete the sentence Saad Khan's biggest pet peeve is smelly people <laughs> uh, uh yeah i'm a little bit of an ocd um from that front but it has nothing to do that that smell was amazing that was not, that, that was a burp smell that was amazing <laughs> Why should I not come back to the office again? No, no, again? no, no. He's 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 delightful. <laughs> Let me listen, bro. I'm telling you, my heart twitched. Like, I'm gonna have biryani in the night because of you. <laughs> <laughs> dying inside. No, he's not dying inside, guys. No, he's he's bad. We are we're gonna share the chocolate, bro. Yeah, yeah I'll give yes. you all the chocolates. Uh-huh. The hamper is yours. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, what movie from the black and white era would you remake if you had a chance? Casablanca. Casablanca. I'm a okay. big fan of that film. I watched it many many years ago and 
It's a beautiful question as well. Kaisa plan kar rahe ho? Is Humphrey Bogart Bogart and just the way it was made is delightful. And what if it is like Hindi or something? Uh, black and white Hindi uh, Mughal Azam. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Okay. So next question is the sweetest person in your set. The sweetest person in my set on on Constable Girpade. Yeah. Um, the sweetest person in my set, my my DOP, uh, my cinematographer, my right hand, the person who gives the visuals, Vineet Malhotra. He was my. Um, uh, he is very sweet, and of course, my all my actors, and I don't want to name one of them. They're all very right. bad. Everyone, right. from you know Kushal Pawar, who's, who's who is playing Constable Girpade, to Neil, to Vrijesh Hirji, who plays a very important character, uh, to Muskan Bamne, to Chandni Bhavra, to to Doctor Sanket Bosle. Atisha Nayak, everyone just sweet, very sweet people. That's so awesome. So we're gonna make a reload of this and we're gonna tag everybody. So yes, please, yes. Uh, I think uh, yeah. So I say the names slowly then. <laughs> <One more time. laughs> so that they like okay, he didn't, he didn't, he missed us. Yeah. But no, I I I I think it it just um you know uh, I think sweetness begets sweetness. It's just right. it just comes together. Absolutely. Okay. The next. No, question. but having said that, they, they obviously Neil mentioned that I've been a nightmare sometimes to work with, but that's also because I'm very, I, I'm very demanding when I'm directing. Are you like, a perfectionist? I, I I don't think there's anything like a perfectionist. It's very difficult to say that. Mm. Nobody can be a perfectionist. Vishwas, think about it. Right. We try to do our best. Absolutely. Which we think is perfect. Right. But that's never going to be perfect. Right. Because someone else is going to do something better than that. Yeah. But you know, people who have a vision. Yeah. other people think that they are perfectionists because you always have a vision and you want to take people towards that vision yeah. so uh, when you start a movie do you know how the movie should look like in, have you already visualized it in your mind yes we do of course templates and look mm. books and stuff like that it's like an artist right there's a look book right. uh, what is the look and feel the palette that is done but i never ever eventually know how it's going like how it's going to all come together right it just but we know the the writing the story or the writing material that is bible for us right or whatever book that works for you i mean it's the, it's a holy book for us mm. and once that uh, gets translated to visual then so many other nuances come in like improv comes in spontaneity comes in other people's suggestions i love taking suggestions mm. there are times where i've been shooting something and there'll be a light boy behind near the monitor and uh, i say cut and th- th- and i would i would turn around to just watch how many people are laughing and if i find a light boy or someone not laughing I would turn to them as like why, mm-hmm. and they'd be like, "Yes, sir, um, um, funny there, but um, just the irbe ko. There has to be more comedy or something like that." And I'm like, "Okay, what's your idea?" And I love that because that, that it's not that that person's feeling important. I feel um, that kind of involvement is very important because that's the audience eventually. Mm-hmm. When I was doing Nagaraj or Girpati, there have been so many times which is which is so good where at the end of me saying cut for a particular scene, everyone in the crew will be laughing or smiling. Then you know, oh, कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है. Imagine if you're doing a comedy and people are like just serious, mm. and, you know, and just like looking like like that and you know, creepily, and you're like you're wondering, okay, well, am I doing something right or wrong? That mm. question comes in. But yeah, but the feeling of seeing it either on celluloid or on OTT or when you the the shows on the platform or what have you, there's a certain joy that you know. That you can't uh, compare it to anything else. Right. It's like when you write a book and when you have the hardbound copy, right. this feeling is something else. Right. Right. The fact that you can tangibly hold it mm. is it, it gives you a, 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 a feeling of accomplishment that I think it, it completes everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. That brings to the next question. Worst criticism you have ever had about yourself. Um. <laughs> That's a tough one. Worst criticism that I've ever had about myself. Uh, the wow. I mean, I very rarely hang out with people who criticize me. <laughs> <laughs> I should just uh, yeah. Uh, but um, that I am. Uh, I'm sometimes. Uh, um, I would say the worst criticism would be I'm. Uh, I'm a bit. Yeah, I'm a bit too um, finicky. I'm a bit too finicky. Um, I'm not finicky is not the right word. I'm a, I'm I'm a bit too annoying that I want something done my way. Right. Um, but I think that's that's valid for most directors. Yeah, I'm sure. Because if you're a director, then you have a vision, yeah, then absolutely. you want it to be done a certain way. Absolutely. So I'm a, I can get a bit annoying. I'm not gonna right. lie. I can get a bit annoying. But I've never, no one's ever criticized me on that. They maybe have come and told me, uh, maybe after a process. Right. I've had actors who come and told me that you were so tough, but. After I saw what I saw, I, I really I understood why you were being like that. Right, that's happened. Mm. Do you, Do you ever wanted to be an actor yourself? 
Uh, I, uh, yes, when I was uh, in my college days and when I was doing theatre. Yeah. And then one, uh, I was uh, I was acting in a play which was being directed by an older gentleman called R. Nagesh, who was a popular theatre director in Canada. Mm. So he used to take a lot of Girish uh, Karnad's plays, Girish Karnad sir's plays, and he used to make it in Hindi and English. So uh, he did a, uh, he did a Kannada play um, and he made it into English. And I was acting and I was doing two three roles in that play. Because there were six people cast and each person was doing three roles because there were 18 characters. Mm. Um, and uh, I was I was 19 years old and uh, he's in re- one of the rehearsals he stopped me and he came up to me and he said after this play don't act again. I said why sir? <laughs> I said am I that bad? He said no. The problem is when you're acting with two other actors. When they are saying their lines, you're also mouthing their lines <laughs> because you know their lines also. <laughs> okay. And you're not reacting. You're like saying everything. So you you are a, you can be a good director. Oh, okay. But don't act oh. because you're you're knowing what's happening around you. I have given direction to that guy to move from here to here. You are already knowing it, so you're trying. Before that guy even moves, you're wanting to correct him. Oh. So he gave me that insight, which actually changed my life. Okay, so he is the one who put you in that direction. He just said, he, he came and told me this much only. He just said, you know, for you, direction is good because you are seeing what's happening. Right. And then I uh, kind of realized that I'm not as talented as an actor mm. at that time mm. because I wasn't. I mean, I mean, I was very. I'm, I'm lucky that I had such people who to, told me about this. So I went and I started directing. Right after that, I started directing. I was 17 when it happened. So. Oh, awesome! Okay, all right. So the last thing is the biggest celebrity you have ever met. Biggest celebrity that I've ever met, um, um, SRK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've not met met, but I've happened to be around when he when he had come to a set once. Yeah, and I think the rest is history. I don't have to say anything because everyone talks about him, like. they know him and they've met him and they hug him and i i just think that he's an aura by himself that's about it right just an aura I mean, okay there only one person is made like that in centuries right so if you have to direct somebody who's like the dream cast for you wow such an amazing question dream cast for me uh, hmm ah uh, wow this is such a tough question but i'm going to uh, dicaprio yeah Yeah, I'm a big, big fan of the way he performs. Mm. Um, DiCaprio, um, the late Mr. Irfan Khan, but yeah, he's gone. So <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I definitely want to work with uh, with obviously Shah Rukh Khan sir, of course, because I just, I just think that I, I would just want to be around and just to be able to tell action to him. And after that, even if the film doesn't get made, it's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just want to see action to Shah Rukh Khan sir once. Right. I think yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So uh, with that, I think uh, we'd like to uh, come to end. Okay. So you win the hamper. So this is the f- <laughs> rapid fire. Uh, Vaisha, you want to share with me <laughs> chocolates? No, I'm, no, I'm generally saying I'm not being sarcastic. I genuinely want to because I don't want to, you know, make you feel bad. And he's announced your name also. So now people are going to be wondering who this person is. No, oh, he's a rock star. I mean, he's a creative guy. No, of course he is. I'm Thank yeah, thank you. thank you so much uh, for having me on the having Vishwas Mudgal show. It's an honor, and the fact that you know your your show lost its virginity to me, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm delighted that I could be that person Absolutely. for the show. So thank you. Okay, thank you so much, and this is my book, The Last Avatar. Oh. Guys, <laughs> this is the book that I'm being. Uh, there is money inside the book. You can't, you can't see it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Hey, there's no money. I'm just joking. Guys. But I thought you were going to give me money. No, there's no money. We'll give you money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just sounds so wrong. Like I thought you were going to give me money. It's like all directors and they yeah. first talk about money. Yes, we do, guys. <laughs> awesome. So it was really uh, insightful. I think uh, the audience uh, definitely got a glimpse of uh, what it is to pursue a career. basically in the media industry and um, also of course about your um, um, you know the uh, the whole uh, direction of how you actually came here and also your the next uh, you know project that you uh, having any other thing you want to talk about the parting ways any suggestions for the audience before you know say goodbye thank you for having me first of all it's really been a pleasure thank you so much thank you so much vishak uh, shan kapil thank you very much uh, thank you for the audience for uh, indulging us um my i think the parting word sounds a little dark <laughs> so i'm going to say uh, that you know if um, you really love something then you should go after it whether it's uh, money a girl 
writing direction mm-hmm. cinematography if you want to go for it just go after it don't think about anything don't think about what people will say don't think about what people will 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 uh, comprehend just go with what you would like to do and um, also as much as possible enjoy the process it's going to be tough but enjoy the process because once you are done and once you see what you have crafted out there there will be a certain sense of uh, joy that nothing can replace at that point so all the best in all your future endeavors to everyone who was watching thank you yeah thank you so much uh, sad the, the last one came out like a movie dialogue which one where the last time what you were told <laughs> it just like uh, hearing like sharukh khan in that uh, movie right sare uh, kainat om shanti om shanti <laughs> अगर क्या अगर अगर तुम सच्चे दिल से चाहो तो कभी भी बर्फ नहीं कर सकता है Awesome. I think okay. that 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 should be your uh, teaser, know, uh, teaser. <laughs> teaser. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Pleasure.